Today, we go back in the past to bring ourselves into the future. Our ancestors knew something we didn't. They made ornate, beautiful pieces of artwork. They called them dream catchers. We now follow in their footsteps as we make these coils out of wire. We are understanding them different. We look at them now as energy. Have we now awakened to our true calling? Energy from our ancestors to us. It's time we understand this whole subject better. I, for one, can't wait. It's our future, and it's always belonged to us. Hello, everyone. I'm Nathan, otherwise known as the Old Man, Old Man Build. We're here with Ian. We're also here with Benefactor TV, and we're talking about coils today. You guys going to say hi? What's going on, everybody? Sorry, my stream just crashed, so i got to put it back up. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> nice to meet you. Hello. Yeah, you too. So, Ian, we have your coil up on the uh, screen here right now. Can you just explain a little bit about what's going on with this one? Yeah, that's that's me going down a bit of a, a Gerald rabbit hole. Uh, I've um, just picked up from what he was saying about it. I mean, the, the, his presentation got cancelled so many times on APEC, I kind of thought, oh, well, how difficult can this be? <laughs> so uh, anyway, so I... So I gave it a shot, and when I started realizing that you, you're using basically geometry, so you're starting off, I start off with triangles and uh, squares, um, pentagons, ox o octagons, and um, uh, so basically you start at one point and then just working around it, and you're moving forward by one each time, and that's what gives you the overall kind of shape. So how, you do how it to, so, so the basic premise that I'm trying to pick up from what I've heard Gerald and others talk about is is the differential is that the field pressure is different from from each side within each coil and then I have to repeat this and do it the opposite sense on the top um, so that you get up this this change of angles of where the energy has to flow it's kind of interacting with all the other different angles that that are in there in a in a constructive way hopefully and uh, and then so that will then because it's going faster on the longer ends but it's got more of a, a an abrupt angle to turn um it's it's basically creating a differential pressure between the different layering and so it's got a it's got a movement inside it that's what i seem to think um jeremiah i think mentioned something it was almost uh, like a there's a temporal thing going on at the center of it as well and um and I know definitely that, a temporal you know, thing going on the center. You've got, yeah. So it's uh so then you've got your your cold energy, zero point energy potentially in the center that is filling in to try and equalize the system, but it can't do it when it's running like this all the time. Then uh, you're getting that inflow of, of energy trying to equalize it. I think but anyway, that's what I kind of took from it. Gotcha. So, yeah, it kind of looks yeah. like uh, Gerald's coil. One of them, anyway. He's, I think, he's stacked three in his. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, well, it's not. This is this was just the first attempt, really, just to see to get a feel for how to wind things like this, and because uh, I'd never done it before. So, so uh, yeah, you got to write down all the numbers, or you just get lost after this <laughs> the third time around. You got to number every post as well, because uh, otherwise, it's uh, yeah, you get lost really quickly. So, oh, it looks like it because it, uh, you can see the points where it's connecting, and it's a long distance yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it, it's back. It, it's back to the tri. It's back to the triangular form at the top. But um, well, essentially, because it's a mix of ratios as well. Because if you've got um, um, there's another picture that I find online. I think I sent to you was that uh, it's kind of like. A bunch of circles together and it has all the points around it and when you actually look at ratios and in, in music like sort of uh, three to three to two which is pythagorean fifths and four to three which is fourth the perfect fourth you 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 can actually see the actual 
the, around the circumference, you see where they are in relation to each other. And that seems to be in, embedded in the coil as well into the geometry because it has all the ratios. Well, if it had 60 nodes, then you would have all the ratios available. But with 24, you have, uh, you're have you limited to like five, I find so far. But, um, but again, I haven't really looked very hard at that side of it just yet. I just okay. thought I'd see how this would turn out. So, yeah. Hold on, let me pull it up real quick. But I'm dying to, I'm love, we'd love to hear Gerald's take on it and what he's, I know he's keeping sorry, guys for a period of time. I must have, uh, if I missed this, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, where did you get your inspiration for this design for the coil? Gerald? Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Nice. laughs> yeah. Well, well, I was listening. I've, I, well, I've been listening to, I've been fascinated by it since he first showed it. And I thought, oh, very interesting. And then, but he's, he's discussed it enough in certain ways. I kind of thought I've got a pretty good handle on what he's doing. So, um, so I thought, well, I'll give it a shot and just, um, you know, I, I'll just spend a bit of time on it and see what I can come up with. And I'll be learning something along the way and I might find it different, who knows? So I'm, I'm just working with that principle. So, yeah, so that, um, that circular diagram there was basically, uh, uh, it, it shows you the ratios of, of, um, I think it's uh, two to three, three to four, uh, one to two in the center and. So, but it, it's really nice the way it actually shows it almost like in a three-dimensional format with and how the geometry contains the energy the bubble inside each one of it and it grows and grows as as it uh, as the you increase the nodes but i thought also if you can if you rotate the ones inside and this implies a rhythm to me as well and i often wondered well how do you get rhythm into coils you know i used to be a drummer many years ago and uh, and i always know what music and rhythm feels and to to be part of and uh, and it's um it's special so that there's when things are special there's usually like harmony and music it's special there's usually a reason why it is the way it is so you try to think well let's go for the most um fundamental source that you can find in this and that's it. so if you go go to pythagorean fifths and just start at one work your way up but you're multiplying by three by and dividing by two for each and each fifth. The reason why I think it's fundamental is because when you when you pluck a string on a on a un, on a uh, what do you call it, unicord, um, the the next string to that vibrates at specifically three uh, um, three over two beside it, and that fifth then denotes the root note of the next chord structure above it. So a sympathetic response. And then you think, well, what what is what is what is uh what's vibrating and what's the vibration reacting with? And you have to say it's not it's not just the air. If we live in an ether or an, an energy mm. medium, it's vibrating within that medium as well, and it's causing the sympathetic vibration beside it, which is a very natural way to do this. And right. um so that's quite a uh, th this um this is uh interesting, right? I went down this because the other, another kind of very natural um, process, obviously, is DNA. And somebody wrote a paper on this back in the 1990s, I think it was. And what they did was that they they found all the resonant infrared points uh, within the four uh, molecules here of, of, of the basic DNA structure, building blocks. And they brought it, they found that, that every number had a, every point had a wave number and then they transferred that into a frequency and then divided it hmm. you know just uh, in octaves down until they got it into uh, the audible range and placed them on the notes on the keyboard right so so I thought okay but at this point I'm working with Pythagorean fifths and I realized that if you have 12 iterations of fifths they go they arrive seven octaves up but it's not it's not the same note as you would have if it's if it's uh, uh, it, it, if you multiply two to one like everybody does to go up octaves octaves and then you end up seven octaves up. But if you do that same iteration using Pythagorean fifths, three to two is not compatible with two to one mathematically. So you end up with a, a ninth note higher on the Pythagorean fifths that represent that same octave higher. So 
I used Pythagorean fifths to come back down, bit time consuming, but I got there in the end. And, and, and these are the notes that I find, which were different from the notes that they find just by having the circuit, having the, the, uh, the octaves using two to one all the way down. And that mine ended up starting in F sharp. And I think there started at um, C sharp or something like that. It's in the other diagram, the black and white one uh, was theirs. And th these are the ones that I calculated down. So again, it's just looking uh, curious. I was curious to see what musical notes. And you know, you've got the, the King's Chamber and the Great Pyramid. And they say that's an F sharp, I think it was. And anyway, so when I recalculated all those numbers down, um, I mean, it could mean absolutely nothing at all. <laughs> but it was an interesting thing for me to do just to get up to get the right sequence of notes musical notes that equate to those and uh, looking for the similarities within it all interestingly though and they mentioned it in the paper there's a gap there and you'd think there would be kind of a, a spectrum of notes everywhere yeah that's from their paper you see if it's uh with uh you've got about two-thirds of the way up you've got a gap with very little or nothing in it at all and then it picks up again and you've got a bit more that same pattern shows obviously in mine um and uh you just wonder what is that gap when you're looking at is it significant in any way and i don't know but it's just it was interesting to see it there yeah well it's my opinion but in terms of in terms of consider it it's yeah. It's yeah. better to consider it than than uh, and not have it not be true than not consider it and have it be true, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's um, I, you know, I was I was curious because the Pythagorean fifth movement in octaves seems to be the more correct way to do it, but you do have what's called the Pythagorean comma. Uh, mm -hmm. That's there. I mean, everybody, different people have a different take on it, and mine may not be as correct as somebody else's, but it's um it, it's it's it feels like it's it's more when you go up in octaves and it's not two to one it feels it's an open system because you're not arriving at a precise point based on on purely on octaves of of two to one and if you go up um if you go up in three to two then you end up with a different note sequence and they're all mod nine as well and everything adds up to nine in that way as well which is fascinating so um, right from a do, vortex math like, perspective it is yeah. yeah just i mean just from i mean just from the, the mod nine perspective itself there's so yeah. much of it is written between the diameter of the moon the how far it moves and in an r right. is the same as its radius <laughs> everything's kind of very very tied together ever since i read that book quadrivium there's so much information in that but you see that this everything here and you get was written into it it was all in nines you know everything was a multiple of nine hey gerald what's going on gerald hello hello how are you hello gerald good that's good a, that's a gorgeous i saw he's, i know yeah, exactly well it's not finished it. it's not it's not finished that's half of it i've got to put, uh -huh. put the other half on top but i got i i had to i was going to have to redo the entire number system on it to be able to get it in reverse going back up out of it i was trying i'm trying to uh See. work with your your idea and your coil system because uh, I got I got fed up waiting for the presentation. <laughs> I apologize. You know what? It, I guess you could call it a series of unfortunate circumstances. <laughs> it, oh, totally. Yeah, I know. Yeah. How, how, how bizarre. But anyway, but that's uh, that was just my initial. I just wanted to try try out using using the the, the different shapes. Uh, obviously, that's... the triangle square. Uh, exactly hexagon, hex, hex, hexagon and then yeah. and then I, said, I went up to octagon uh and then i didn't i was thinking about doing a circle around the outside and i thought oh, no, depends, let's, let's just, and I, I just went back and then i went back into the triangle so so it's kind of it opens and then closes and then i was going to reverse it i've just been picking up on what you've been saying you know what I've, you're I'm going to reverse right. it start start from 12 and then work my way in the opposite sense around the same post and then build it build it out to the oct octagon and then back in to the triangle at the top um so but you're, you're, yeah I, you're absolutely dead on you're in the in the right direction all the way around uh that's what a 36 point coil no that's that's 24. that's 20 it should be 36 i think it should be but i mean when you're advancing it um, i'm having to 
you know, either I think actually I retarded it by going one less to move the shape in a clockwise pattern, but but it kind oh. of it's moving counterclockwise. No, you so, actually but, you I don't know exactly how you wound that, but just by looking at it, I would say you're almost dead on to the way that I'm doing it. I'm not sure though, because your your weave pattern doesn't seem to be completely symmetrical. But how you have double layers in there, mm -hmm. you know what? The minute I did, me and Nathan were talking about this the other day. I'm going to actually teach uh, a class exactly how to wind my coil. And you need to be there because sure. I think you would be ahead of the class. <laughs> I don't mean to, to you know, to sound like uh, yeah. you're the star student, so to speak. But you, you understand how the weaving pattern goes. And triangle and hexagon and cubic are definitely in there. And it's how right. you interweave them. And when you stop on your number pattern and pick up on the, the next number pattern, that will make the hugest difference on the way that energy is going to flow. And, and if you make that slight mistake, it will almost cancel uh, your uh, secondary out. So I don't know exactly how you got that done, but that looks beautiful. That that's um, right off the top of my head. I'd yeah. say that would work to some degree. <laughs> oh. Well, there it is. <laughs> I had to write down all the numbers. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. But so yeah. if I find that if I if I didn't have it written down, I got lost within the first few turns around. I thought, oh, where was I? Somebody said well, something and then it's back to the start again. So I'll, I'll yeah, just having it written down like that. For instance, yeah. I have part of a book that I'm making on exactly how to make these coils right. and the number sequencing as well. So I, I, I right. totally get where you're at. And you have to have it because you're in the middle of winding and you you think you're on one number and not the other. You won't realize until you've got three wraps around and you're like, oh, okay, that geometrical form is done. And you have to unwind it if you even can and then start from that point. So, yeah. 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 You're, oh, yeah. No, you're I, down, that's yeah, good. It, it had to it. <laughs> I applaud you. You're doing awesome yeah. without anybody's help at all did you have any instruction whatsoever did you just pick it up and go for it no no i, I listened to what jeremiah said um in terms of the principle behind it uh, yeah. he basically described it fairly fairly succinctly what it really was doing and and how the and when i when i, I just 3d printed the the uh the initial kind of uh, former for it with the posts yeah. and then just thought well and it, it just became quite obvious that there was a way to do this to make it sequential going around it and then changing the shape. And once you get to the natural finish of that one, you then start the next geomet ge the next set of geometry. You get yeah. around to the starting point of that, having gone all the way around it. I mean, the triangles were the longest. And um, and there was a relationship, obviously, between the, the amount of time you go around with the amount of... There is, Connection depending points. on the form that you want, the coil you're looking for, and the field you're trying to form. Because every coil that you make will will form a different shape of, of magnetic field, and it will mm -hmm. increase or decrease your electrostatic field depending on the pinch of the coil, the form of the coil, how many layers you have. Is it... Uh, uh, like a set of stairs, does it work like scales? There's there's a few things that are are involved, but you're you're for just picking it yeah. up and listening. Hey man, hats off. <laughs> that's that's good job. <laughs> yeah, but I also yeah. I also saw I also saw that it has um with 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 ratios in it because I mean all all the different the geometries have different ratios to their inner angles as well. But also, it um, there's a there's a rhythm in there as well. There which, is, which is kind of which was um, interesting. That was noticeable when I was kind of doing it. And I've always wondered how to include rhythm in a coil because it has a direction, has a, so, and then all these different nodal points will, will strike different things at different times. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah.
So when you're done winding your coil, use, mm -hmm. um, I would use plastic uh, zap straps. That's, that's what I use to solidify the coil to get it um, to a point where I can put it in um, resin if that's, if that's the route you're going. Mm -hmm. And if you use the zap straps, it's like pinching the edges and you can get rid of right. your posts and then your coil becomes three dimensional. Like it doesn't have to be nailed to a board, so to speak, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I saw that from yours. You using cable ties, right? Is that what you called? Yep, they're cable yep. ties. Yeah, cable ties, zap straps, kind of a different name for the yeah. same thing. Yeah, <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, and then yeah, I've, so I've got that, so I can actually insert those round and then just wrap them and pull them tight to to tighten up the the outside edges of it. Yeah. So yeah. now that you're building these coils and you you get the fact that there's a rhythm, there's actually. Like I built about 175 different kinds and the sequencing of where you put your triangles, your cubes, your hexagons, it matters in comparison to what you're trying to achieve. So if you're trying to achieve, say, uh, a PEMF system for healing, uh, mm -hmm. I would put in certain, I, I don't want to say it just outright because we're going to show how to do this in detail, right? So it's like giving it away, but at the same time, I'm not charging for it. I'm still giving it away. But we talked about doing a structured class on teaching this. But there is a, a sequence that can give you, I wouldn't say free energy or over unity. I'll say real efficient system. Okay. Right. And and right. then there's another sequence that would help you get lift. And, and then the same uh, form, but a uh, less windings on certain wraps will give you a really good PEMF system for pulse electromagnetic frequency healing. So okay. when you start building different coils mm -hmm. and testing them, you're going to see how they kind of come together. But a word of warning, um, until you get to the level where you've done a bunch of testing on smaller coils, I, I personally wouldn't go over 18 inches. Just just until you get to the level where it's you understand how the fields are going to be pushed out, how they're compressed, how they're pinched. Because if you go a little further than that, uh, your outcomes are different. There's there because you can scale this up, right? But mm -hmm. your anomalies get a little bit more intense as the coils get larger. And then your uh, efficiency for putting out energy is a little different. It works differently. I, 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 it's hard to explain without giving away the golden goose, right? But, I mean, we're going to give it away in a very near, near future uh, uh, video series. I'm actually going to do my presentation on Old Man Builds and Bernie's uh, Friday Night Free Energy uh, I'm not waiting for APAC anymore. So, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. cool. Excellent. Oh, well, that's good. So to hear. It's yeah. coming and it's very, very, very shortly. Maybe this Friday. Depends. I got a couple uh, uh, contracts I have to complete this week. We'll see how much time I have. But uh, hopefully this Friday, maybe next Friday at the latest. So that's where I'm at nice. with, with that. Anyway. Nice. No, I look forward to it. For yeah, sure. I appreciate you uh, yeah. um, doing this work. That's anyone and everyone that can get into this, who can pick it up <laughs> like you, they should. Like Nathan, yeah. on top of his game, Ben, he's doing the same thing, just slightly different. We're all working on the same principle, and I think everybody and anyone who can or even has the desire to do this should. So, yeah, mm -hmm. good job, man. That's yeah. awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah that... um... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it's okay. I was just going to say, I've, yeah, I've, I've um, ordered more wire. <laughs> so can you guys a explain? More, a, lot, the... a lot more wire. I hear that. I have spools. Go ahead, Nathan. Can you guys explain wire gauge? And then also, uh, Ian, if you don't mind, can you explain the uh, tones versus uh, the coil? And I'll I'll put the coil back up. Right. 
you guys hear me? Uh, do, are you talking? Are you you mean the, the ratios of the, the what's angles? the wire gauge you guys are using to wind your coils? Uh, oh, the wire. Then, did you want to go ahead first, I, or do you want me to go ahead? You, you go ahead. You want me to go ahead? You're doing it wrong. Okay. So, so the the coil that you see that's 12 inches with the pickup coils around it, that's 22 gauge. Both uh, the primary and the secondary are 22 gauge. On one of the previous lives, I had said they were two different gauges, but I had looked into my notes and I was wrong. I apologize. You know, don't hang me for it. <laughs> but they're both the same gauge on the primary and the secondary. And I don't know. I've worked with quite a few different gauges from 32 all the way to 16. And your power ratios change. Again, it, it comes down to what you're trying to do with what coil you're building. So for me, uh, between 20 and, I don't know, I like to use between 20 and, and 26 gauge, give or take. I don't know what you're using for your coil, though. I had I had um, some 28 gauge. Yeah. And so I was using the 28 gauge just to start with and... But I have I've got a couple of big spools of 22, so that's good to know as well. But I was doing it on a, you know, I was having trouble getting the posts. Some some of them kept breaking off and things like that. So eventually I just kind of thought, well, I'll use I'll use a thinner gauge wire, and then I should be able to hold and not put as much pressure on the posts as it gets higher. So yeah, when I, when so, I, and again, I wasn't even sure because because you know I didn't want to damage the wire by making the posts, you know v v shaped so yeah. because i wanted to make sure that the angle was maximized for what it was supposed to be rather than it rounding off too much as well so um i wasn't so sure about what whether that was right or not either but i just thought if if you know maybe just working on the principles that i was and just rotating it around using the different geometric forms i thought that if there's something odd if, the, if i might find something different who knows <laughs> i think you have I'll give you a bit of a tip. When I first started this, what I used was a piece of wood and I used carpenter nails, the big, long three inch ones. Mm -hmm. But I put a plastic right. straw over each nail as I nailed it into the 24 points so that when I wrap the coil, uh, I can put as much pressure on the posts as I want. And then when I was done with it, as I put the zip tie through it, I can literally pull the straw, pull the zip tie done and pull the nail out it was no no issue whatsoever so i don't know if you want to go that route but it's just uh it's what i did when i began yeah. right no, that, that makes sense yeah i just i had the 3d printer and i thought you know, i'll just print out a former and see what it goes like so if know. i had a 3d printer i would have done the same <laughs> so yeah i understand yeah <laughs> when it comes to the gauge nice. of wire i don't think it matters so much as your 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 gauge after oh I, I you know what between 32 and 20 really doesn't make a difference it doesn't matter if you're running high voltage or high current because of the way that the geometrical forms allow the energy to flow in the system it's almost like once it's flowing the uh, uh toroid shape of the coil itself acts as the full current where the current's running. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that properly. As that energy is flowing geometrically, the toroid itself becomes one. So it's like, right. instead of having all these individual wires and layers, they all become one magnetic tube. And at different gotcha. frequencies, it does different <clears throat> things. So. And, and you have the differential pressure from across the scent from the top to the bottom. And that yeah. gives you your polarity, and your you've got your your equatorial plane is right through the center, I presume, horizontally. Absolutely, yeah. and and different right. forms and different sequen uh, sorry sequences will push that field out further from your sides, mm -hmm. or cancel it out altogether and focus it strictly in the center, depending on what you're trying to do. These geometrical right. coils right. are they're the key to a lot of different tech. Sure. Have yeah, you no, started pulsing it yet, or are you in the process of still winding? 
No, it's still winding. I've done half of it in terms of what I wanted to do. And now, now I've got to go 180 degrees and then start from the other direction. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's the horseshoe point of of where the whereas one coil is overlaid on top of the other. So I've got a, I've got the first I've, I think what I've done is built what I thought was the first coil going yeah. through going out and then back in again. And then I was going to reverse just basically turn it 180 degrees. So I'm starting on 12 instead of 24. And then I'm, I'm going in the opposite direction to oh. to be the same as the, the horseshoe thing. So you've got an open system in the center, but then one coil and you still have the ability to join one coil to the other externally if you wanted to, because the wires are all there. So See, I wasn't sure exactly. Mm -hmm. No, you, you did good. Um, um, how do I put this? This is a little piece of constructive criticism. Please don't take offense. For what you've mm -hmm. done is amazing. And this is why I think when me and Nathan were discussing about teaching a class on this, uh, it, it I kind of have to teach certain points specifically. And what you did for the 180, I get it. That's what most people actually do. But that's not how I base. There's a very specific principle that I kind of kept close to my chest on this one but it's the way that you wind the coil when you wind say one form uh let's say a triangle and you're winding it uh clockwise so you get your form done then you wind 180 degrees out of phase counterclockwise that same form then you switch your next layer Oh, okay. Okay. So that's that gives you the ability to layer and 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 capture the skin effect in between each layer as they're crossing. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It, like I said, it's nice. something I've kind of kept close to chest and not told too many people about because there's people out there that are trying to, um, let's just say, obtain this nefariously. <laughs> Just yeah, ever that. since I ever since I got into any of this, that, that word nefarious is pretty common. Yeah, yeah, you understand. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, no, it no, goes against regular I physics in a sense. So academia doesn't know, like what that. Oh, sorry. What you're doing is fantastic, I think. So it's just great. Thank and you. it's great that you're sharing it as well for so many people to keep it close to them and die with it usually. But it and was given it's freely it's to me, so I want to give it freely to everybody else. But at the same time, I, I've protected myself. When I first started this journey, I was uh, trying to get it open source really quick and give it to everyone, right? And uh, I still yeah. want to do that. But there's a certain way of doing it so that, like you said, there's <laughs> nefarious people in the background. So, you know, you, you got to have safeties in play once you start to see certain anomalies with these coils. I have three dead man right. switches <clears throat> and they're set up in three different medias, three different forms. So if anything stupid happens to me, I'd never commit suicide in a million years. My beliefs wouldn't, if I <laughs> couldn't do it. Right. So that being said, um, <clears throat> uh, you still have to protect yourself in a sense because we're dealing with technologies that uh, have been found before. This isn't like there's yeah. nothing new under the sun, but it's new to this generation and new to the people that haven't played with it, which is, you know, me and others. And so as long as uh, I think everybody's uh, open and, and shares their information, then uh, this tech will get out to maybe not, we may not see it in, in the market in our time, but our children might. And that's kind of my goal is to kind of get the info out, get people working on it. Just like John Bedini used to say, you know, let, let, let's have the people decide. Let's put it out there. If they want to work on it, if they want this type of tech, great. If they don't, that's okay too. You know, some people don't have time to to put systems like this in their house or 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 tinker around and, and find how these systems work. Some people would rather just pay a bill. That's okay too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, on a, oh, for sure. On a practical note, though, if you, um, I, I was looking into. I know, I know, you're not keen on Malcolm Bendel, but I took a, I took a look around down that rabbit hole 
and oh, so did what I. I did like was he he actually he actually um he put in patent applications to protect his ideas not so that people could not then just take it and produce it produce a patent and then just bury it right oh i get that then he I wouldn't know. legally be have any rights to it anymore so so that that's also a consideration as well right i thought about that but that's why i keep certain points to myself that will only be taught in private and and if mm -hmm. somebody was to choose to do that uh with all due respect to the law i don't care i mm -hmm. created a lot of the things that came to bring this tech together it's not my tech but at the same time i did 15 years of work on it and i don't care what law says what you're not going to stop me from sharing this information you can take me to court i don't own anything so what are you going to take from you know blood from a stone good luck I know it's kind of a bad attitude, and I, and I apologize to everybody out there listening. But uh, I'm I'm not in it to win it. I'm not in it for the money. I'm not. I'm in it to just share the truth that I know, and uh, you could take right. it for what it is, right? And when it comes to patents, I kind of view the patent office as a legal thievery, right? Because if I put my system in into the patent office. And they decide, oh, well, this is a really good system and I want it. They're just going to take it and shelve it. And then nobody sees it. Mm -hmm. For others, mm -hmm. I understand, go that route. If you have the money to fight big corporations and 20 lawyers at a time, then go for it. I personally don't want yeah. the battle. <laughs> I'm just going to share the information as knowledge and I hope that if uh, it turns into something for everybody that they, for me, I like it like this. If I was to teach one person under the obligation, I would only teach that person if they taught two people. And the two people that they taught have to each teach two people and so on and so on and so on. And that's how I kind of think that we should be getting this tech out. I agree with, uh, in a sense, the way that Malcolm Bendall is expressing it because he patented it to protect it. But I did a deep study into Malcolm Bendall as well. Awesome tech. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it was created 40 years prior by a man by the name of Paul Pantone. And he didn't share his tech. He tried to get it patented and he tried to... Uh, go the route of education through universities and they locked him up for it, tried to commit him to an insane asylum. And then uh, what they did is they let him out when he was, I think it was years later. And then he went to another country and created universities teaching people how to make the GEET motor. And Malcolm Bendall's system is essentially the GEET motor with an external reactor. Whereas Paul Pantone's system has an internal reactor they're the same system so i mean i applaud malcolm bendall for doing the work that he did and the fact that he's put it into ships and cars and trucks hey man hats off to the guy but i think it was somebody else's tech that got embellished on <laughs> that's my opinion yeah. if i'm wrong hey prove me wrong i'll admit that i'm wrong and i'll apologize that's i have no problem being wrong <laughs> But, no, but he's he's he. I, from what I've heard of him speaking about it, he hasn't really said that it, it that he said that these are the ideas of other people that he's just pulled together, and, uh, and but it, basically he's got his model there. So it it seems, I mean, anyway. But I mean, it's um it's interesting. I just brought it up because of the the whole protection. Uh, yeah, the I information get that totally. just to prevent other people from actually seeing what you're doing, and then I mean this has no moving parts huh i mean it's 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 perfect it's it's like a solid no state energy machine right solid but remember state. that's 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 going for gold <laughs> there's no moving parts as as in uh um say moving magnets or a spinning wheel mm -hmm. but there are moving forces and you have yes. to take that yeah. into account when you're building these systems so yeah, yeah but absolutely this is the goal right 
to literally put it in your house, put in a ground wire, put in an antenna, hook it up to the system, turn it on. That's it. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to pay for your hydro bill, by all means. If you want to build something like this, even better. That's the way sure. I see it. Yeah. yeah cool. Nice. I so look forward that, to your presentation on it. It'll be great. I appreciate that. I'll do the best that I can for everybody that's out there. I'm going to kind of do it in two ways. I'm going to give a scientific uh, explanation and presentation, and I'm also at the same time going to lay out the layman's terms, like um, when I'm talking about, say, uh, the Miller effect or the skin effect, and then I'm going to explain what that is. And I'm going to do it in backyard lingo so that everybody gets it. You know what I mean? Why keep it hidden? <laughs> yeah. Totally, yeah. So I Great. appreciate that. No, I look forward to it. Did so, that answer your question, Nathan? Yes, you guys did. You guys are doing awesome. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm going to show your coil real quick, Gerald. Gerald and I, yeah. I want to show what you uh, put up the last one that you did. So... Was that the question on the E? Oh, that one. Yeah. Is that the 300 volt one? Or is no, that... it's not. You never posted it. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. I apologize to everybody out there. I remember why I didn't post it because I didn't have time to do the editing. I did get that editing program from you there, uh, Nathan. I, I appreciate that. All on the interior. Sorry. Let me rewind it. Real okay, I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> three coils, three meters. Check it out. In three, two, one. 121, 175, 97. Three phase. All on the interior. Have a great day. All right, Gerald, do you want to explain what's going on here? No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> you gotta have fun. Life's short, right? Okay, so you want me to start from the beginning as to uh, what I'm doing here with the circuit and how this is working, or just uh, uh, just okay? You, so, yeah, go ahead. Whatever you're doing, the setup of it, and then into how you got the numbers. Okay, so normally these uh, coils that are sitting on the, like these pickup coils that are sitting on the inside core of the vortex coil, they're wrapped to the 120 winds, they're ferrite cores. Usually they're perfectly 120 degrees uh, apart from each other, but one of them fell and I just quickly pushed it into the camera's view, so that's why you see how it's off. But when they're 120 degrees apart, the uh, voltages balance a little better. So they're not so uh, different. Uh, that being said, the circuit that I'm running this on is a horizontal deflection transistor out of a 28-inch tube TV. I believe it's a C20, it's a C2558, I believe. And it has a 12 volt battery for a power supply. I'm pulsing it with a function generator on the primary only. And so once it, um, yeah. So once I pulse it on the primary, the secondary, the two wires that come off there are just going to a hairpin circuit without a load. So it's basically like a spark gap. And then it's got two capacitors, but I didn't complete the circuit. I just left it as it was. So then uh, using the horizontal deflection transistor, because it has such a very fast rise time and a very fast uh, fall time, I'm able to get these voltages. And the faster I can pulse the system, the higher the voltages go. So... That's how that particularly works there. What you're seeing is um, me pulsing the primary and the secondary 
the field builds up in it, and when it collapses, creates a spark, shoots back in, pushes into the primary, creating a current, kind of like a wave, right? And that's how you're seeing those voltages. And there's a different voltage set that you can get on the outside of the coil. So as those three pickup coils are in the inner core, um, let's say the... 175 volt one in the middle meter and you could put another one right opposite to that i should pick up somewhere around 50 to 60 volts just on the outside right across from that one coil because it matters they link but they link by inductiveness over top and underneath the coil so it's kind of unique how it creates a vortex and then ferrite picks it up so easily so that's what's going on. Did that answer the question? Absolutely. How about you, Ian? Your mic on? I see you talking. That might be muted. I was muted, yeah. Sorry. The, um, the pickup coils between the inside and the outside, though you've got that differential of voltage mm -hmm. between the two. So yep. does that does that actually does it actually create a current through the wire coming from the inside coils pickups? Yes, it towards does. towards where they're going. Yeah, so and if I if I take the two pickup coils, say one on the inner core and one on the outer core, and I'm to cross each line, so the um, output of one of the pickup coils on the inner core and the outer cores input mixed together so it acts like uh almost like a pmn pmh winding i get even right. more out and i get more current out but a little less voltage right because it's cross fielding at the same time as picking up that vortex so yeah right. does that answer your question yeah yeah perfect so and is it is it is it cold? Is the temperature is different in the center to the outside? Yes, it is actually. Uh, it depends on what I'm doing. I can make just the center hot and the outside a cooler temperature, or I can reverse that and make the inside cooler and the outside hot. I have I wouldn't say complete control, but I have a lot of control when it comes to that. And that has to do with the pitching of that magnetic field and controlling it. Yeah. Right. Any other questions on this one? You know what? Just if you don't mind, if it's possible, how many layers do you have in your coil? Oh, you know what? I didn't count it by layers because this one, this well, one's... Like in, in like each coil as one layer. So is there three different oh. coils in there, or is it two, or is it just one it's, long coil? It's, uh, how do I explain this? Let me just think about this for a second, how to explain this so it's understandable. It's two coils, but it's not two coils until you wrap the whole thing, because it's wrapped on one wire. And then... It's cut in a specific part, making it two coils. Does that make sense? That's why I kind of have to teach how it works, right? Like, <laughs> because it's not an easy answer. It's uh, it's a because of the way that I wound it, right? Uh huh. Let's just say I was inspired to wind it this way. It's all one wire, but it's cut in the middle in a certain way where it makes two coils. Gotcha. Oh, wow. <clears throat> you could what was, what, was your, what was your inspiration for doing this in the first place? What 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 brought you to this? this kind uh, of honestly, uh, it started with uh, the Jewel Thief, John Bedini's schoolgirl circuit. I thought it was just right. amazing, right? You're you're lighting a little uh, uh, 100, 110 volt twisty bulb with like a little double A battery. But then um, after working with that and some time, I had a very amazing dream. 
and it inspired me. And it gave me the very specific numbers for the coil that you see me experimenting on. And once I built it and started experimenting with it, my mind was blown. And ever since then, it's just been after another one, after another, after another. So I started winding them. And like I said, now I'm at, I'm actually not at 175. I'm at 178 because I just built three new coils that haven't been seen before. And I'm going to display them shortly, probably on the presentation. But um, anyone could build them once, like you've seen, once you have that principle down, it's, it's just like flowing. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. Yeah. Was there, yeah, this is uh, actually kind of a, something you could look at if you were uh, about to start winding coils. Dream catchers have a very unique way of winding. Um, I wanted to mention to you though, if you wanted to wind like uh, a basket winding weave or something called a starship coil, there's a gentleman on, on YouTube called Mike Powers. And he, I built his coil. He was the one guy I built after Roden. And uh, his coil, he gives you the numbers on his channel, but he says you can't use his coil for military purposes or any other purpose because he found that it does unique things. <laughs> but my system is a little different than his, which thankfully they won't coincide in that way. But if you wanted to maybe uh, get an idea of how I do the inner layers, he's a good gentlemen to start with mike powers just has oh, yes. as it sounds it's spelled yeah i don't know if that helps yeah, at all. Is, uh, oh yeah i mean the uh I have a myriad of questions but i'll just wait for the presentation because it, it'll all come out then but um but it was there was a presentation um this girl sheila did on the cosmic summit and uh yeah. she yeah. was actually showing she was using a rodent coil and she was feeding frequencies into it so she was heterodyning of frequencies right yeah, yeah there she is it's this is this is amazing so you see that the, the coil she has on the table and then yeah. she's actually picking up she's got a like a handheld uh coil uh pickup and then that goes back into the software the scope software on the uh in the computer and I think, I mean, all the numbers that she chose were all mod nine. So they have that inherent stability in them, but she's now showing a representation of what the geometric form in three dimensions looks like around the coil. And I was thinking like, would that be incredible to see for your coil, for visualizing the, the electromagnetic fields and how they're all interacting at the same time? I would love to see that myself. Uh, Nathan yeah. was saying that there's a program out there that does that. And if, if I can get my hands on it, I, I'd love to try it just to see because there's a, <laughs> it, I believe yeah. it's very intense. <laughs> well, you, you, you remember, I mean, it's another, it's another vehicle as well. Is that uh, the circuit that you were using, your signal generator to play tones through the coil? Yeah. Right. So if what I find is some, some other, um, testing that I've done, I was looking at the acoustic resonance, physical acoustic resonance of, of mm -hmm. coils. And um, and I, I was surprised, I mean, I was using quite a thick, uh, you know, I was using a rigid coil because I was vibrating it with a resonant speaker at one end and getting the vibration to go through the coil and using microphones just to pick up when it was when it was resonating. And it was, it was <laughs> unfortunately, it was about seven, seven kilohertz was a possibly the most annoying frequency you could actually have to listen to that's certainly the complaints from the ice were coming to i just had to stop but but it but it, the, the acoustic resonance is much much lower than it's an electromagnetic version the counterpoint obviously right but um so it's really down there in that audible range and it's uh it, it's uh, that took me by surprise but if you're then able to electromagnetically place those tones mm -hmm. into the coil and and you find where the coil's natural resonant point is within within the acoustic range yeah but it's another it's another area that i think is probably i mean i think that we should be able to use acoustics for everything i think well you know, it, it's funny you bring that up because 
the uh, if you were to take a oh what's it called? It's a digital tuner for for acoustic guitars, and I've mm. taken a mic and I plug that into my little tuner, and I run it over the coil while it's running, and I get every note that you can possibly imagine. And if I turn right. it up on a certain frequency, it just rings C. So um, the acoustics in a very tightly wound uh, basket winding coil, they vibrate at such a rate that your ear can pick up on that very tone. I can play a sound. Uh, sorry. I could play a song on my coil just from those tones by playing with my function generator nothing else yeah. around there's no cone no nothing just the very vibration of those wires creates those tones in the in the air around you maybe they're vibrating the air molecules maybe they're vibrating nitrogen or the oxygen i'm not really sure but you can like you said definitely hear it <laughs> and if you have too right. much amplitude in there the house doesn't like you my cats they don't come around me when I'm experimenting. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but yeah. So I understand when it comes to acoustics for sure. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'd love to see that. Yeah. But there's... yeah, but being able to see the visual representation, like on the like a 3D representation of what's going on, is uh, it's just another area of fascination. Be great. Absolutely. I'd love to be able yeah. to see it. I put uh iron filings on the top of my coil and it would just show me it would almost act like a single line and uh i was bringing that up to to nathan and he suggested that the magnetic field might show up on the outside on the sides of the coils rather than on the top because of the way that the system works and it polarizes the fields around it so depending on the way that you built your coil um, you may not see any iron filing um, visualizations either. And you might actually need to do a three-dimensional program like what we're discussing. <laughs> so something to keep in mind, right? I, I think that scalar or ether or, or the quantum vacuum, call it what you will, I don't think it shows up uh, on iron filing systems, but I think that the magnetic field that's created in order to pull that in shows up on the uh iron filings it's just a matter of finding it <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah for sure so i think what uh, the system that um, sheila was using was actually it was it was and somehow she was taking it up in octaves into the electromagnetic spectrum within the coil and then the pickup she was using was actually bringing it back down into the audio range but in a visualization way and then the software that she had in the computer was able to actually relay that back having gone through the electromagnetic system and then coming back in and showing it that way so i was it's i'm not exactly sure how she did it but um but uh, i i did email her and she replied eventually and said oh, about some of the gear she was using, but not all of it. So, but it's interesting. That's interesting. Sure. That is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we got a hmm. question. Wonder if the air density changes the effect. Mm. No, but uh, uh, you can change the effect of the air density. <laughs> does that make sense? Yes, you, it you, does. Yeah, you can actually condition a room, and and I done this in my garage compared to my house uh i was doing experiments getting 100 volts out of each coil and pickup coil and then i moved it out to the garage and i was getting like 27 or 30 or something i was like what's going on and then after a couple days of experimentation right back up and i couldn't understand it and i think it has a lot to do with uh uh charge compression and charge density within that room that you create after experimenting. It's just a thought, a theory, not sure on it. But yeah, I I, I think you can change the air. <laughs> so are you saying that the charge doesn't dissipate in there, in the walls, or just in the air? 
I don't know about in the walls, but I would say in the air. Like when you're creating uh, an electrostatic field such as this with a magnetic component in it, in order for... Okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, I was doing a test. I had the room sealed. Uh, there was multiple windows in this room and the door was closed and I had run it for about an hour, hour and a half. And I had to like, like blow my nose and or plug my nose and blow out my ears because it felt like I was walking up a mountain and the pressure was changing in the room. So I shut the coil off, but the pressure was still there until I blew off a capacitor that was linked in the system because that implosion quick snap went off it was like the bubble burst and the air pressure was normal after that so i don't know if that helps you at all but when it comes to charge i believe that an implosive effect like the blowing off of a capacitor like shorting it out uh it pulls all the energy in and i don't know where it goes it dissipates it maybe the the sound dissipates the energy that gets pulled in from the implosive effect. I'm not sure, but uh, in my experience, that's what needs to be done when when you change the pressure in the room. So you actually created like a field bubble in there that contained what you were doing until you uh, let the energy spark and then boom, the bubble yep. was gone. Yeah, and I have uh, witnesses to that who will uh, testify in a court of law any day of the week for it. So, yeah. That yeah, it was crazy. I, I didn't, I didn't, I had no idea that was going to occur. Uh, otherwise, I would have kept the window open. <laughs> but uh, it was a good thing I didn't because then it showed me that, you know, these systems aren't, uh, they're not closed systems in the sense that we would think what a normal transformer is, right? There's lots of anomalies that surround these vortex systems, especially ones that are uh, vortex in, in 180 degrees out of phase and, and still working. There's a lot to, yeah. to map out on them. I've been working on them for about 15 years and I'm barely scratching the surface, right? There could be a thousand of us working on this, and I don't think we complete the work. That's how intense it is. So, we have a question from the chat real quick. Uh, what is the max or minimum of the device? Uh, I'll be honest. I don't know that yet. The last large test that I did, I used – one sec. I'll show you what I used. I think uh, um, what you were describing before, as you said, is kind of based on the load as well. That was my load. Okay. Just a, a 900 watt electric element. And it's a heating plate? Yep. Yeah, it's a heating plate. So I used that as my load, and the coil got really cold. And I have a. Oh, where is it? big neodymium magnet i don't know if you could see that it's two inches in diameter there's Ooh, two that's a big sucker yeah there's two of them locked together so that big coil oh, that, you, that you see um i had turned the 900 watt element on and i had put the magnet in the center of the open core and it sucked it up held it like levitated it and then I could tap it with my finger and it would roll around the inside. I did a video on it and I called it levitation, uh, magnetic levitation. And it just, it spun, right? And that was from the load that I was using and it didn't go red hot. Uh, I would say it got to about 65, 75% of its heat. And I was watching it with my infrared camera. So I have that recorded, but I never did a video to show it. So right, we were discussing it was it was exhibiting properties of being a superconductor without having to be super cooled like a superconductor. Yeah, and the coil itself was cold. Like you could touch the coil, it should have been hot. I'm using 900 watts on 20 gauge wire. 
should have melted the circuit. No. Right. That's cold electricity. Yeah. So well, I, as we suspect. Yeah, as exactly. It still has to be extensively tested by multiple other people. Right now, mm -hmm. it's it's just me presenting it. Uh, this yeah. is a really cool system, Gerald. Uh, I really love your work with the coils. Thank you. So yeah. this one said repulsion, Gerald. Let me. I, there's another one too. Yeah, the repulsion one. I show it throwing the neodymium around, right? Um, there's another part where I put it under the coil and it actually shoots it out of frame, I believe. Did you need to? I just gotta shut my camera that's, off for a second. That's why so. we wear our wear our PPE. <laughs> I hope you're wearing some safety goggles or, or a helmet or something when you do that. <laughs> yeah, I wear I wear safety goggles. Usually I wear gloves, but uh in these videos I just didn't care. <laughs> Sometimes they get in the way too when you're trying to yeah. you know, be precise with your when you're doing wiring. Exactly. Okay. Sorry guys, my uh oh that's cool washer and dryer downstairs and my daughter's doing laundry, so <laughs> oh, you're good. Oh hold on, that thing just levitated. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. Yeah, oh, yeah that's cool. And that will only happen with a load. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so you basically you've got a that toroidal field that's surrounding the coil, basically, right? As you said, it turns into one field around the whole thing. I remember yeah. uh, reading years ago, Harold Aspton, who was a, he was a British professor at Cambridge, I think, and he did some experiments where he rotated uh, Leyden jars. This is back in like the 40s or 50s, I think. And, uh, and he found that after he had been rotating it for a period of time, it would be easier to start up the next time as if there was a continuous fluid at mo moment. So if you're spinning the ether, let's say, or zero point, whatever you want to call it, if you're creating a, a movement, it actually has inertia, it seems, or potentially has inertia in it that actually keeps it there after you've stopped. You know, and maybe that's why your coil, your coil was still active, because uh, you know if if it is if it is like a super fluid of, of sorts, then and it has inertia and it has movement, then, yeah. In and if we also consider the... Activity, wasn't it five minutes after you'd stopped? Sorry, say that again? You're, 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 I remember you showed a video once of your coil that when you stopped running it, it was still showing infrared activity about five oh, minutes yeah. after you'd shut it down. Yeah, and it wasn't, oh. and that's the funny part. It wasn't heat. You could grab the coil mm -hmm. and the temperature on the gauge of that camera showed that it was room temperature but yet i'm seeing on the infrared camera the full coil and as if it was not hot but as if there was energy flowing through it so yeah yeah that's right uh, mm -hmm. if we also consider evos as well uh evos have the tendency to stick around a little bit after you know and uh they also have the tendency to steal the heat you know steal the heat around them so that might be uh, able to account for cold electricity. I'm not sure, but. Well, I give a tip of the hat to Nathan on that one because uh, I never considered temperature to be any sort of uh, factor whatsoever, but it is. Right, right. Excuse me for one sec, guys. Sorry to break up the conversation. I got to just deal with something really quick. Okay, yeah. so I apologize. Excuse me for a moment. My gravity flyer gets the same thing. It's like 70 something degrees, you know what I mean, on the center plate. And then, but you touch it and it burns your finger. It's the same wow. thing he's doing. Yeah, yeah, it's cold electricity. Well, it might be cold electricity. Yeah, Gerald's getting more of a vortex, though. He's getting that energy to flow in in that direction. Right, he's condensing it into a point. Yeah. It's the way that coil's built that's doing it. We're all kind of getting a little bit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. he's getting the full effect with that thing right no that so. makes sense the closer you get to that that uh that field geometry you know the natural geometry of the universe and uh free energy flowing the toroid shape natural geometry of the universe i believe that one hundred thousand percent 
Oh it's yeah, the, the theory that our universe is shaped like a torus and we're on the south pole the expanding. We can't see the implosion side and the top. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Can you see this here? It's yeah, I was a, wondering what that was. This is how uh, the visual that I get from my coil when it's working, when it's running. So it it's like I pinch the fields mm. and I split the energy so there's charge separation. You got your oh. north for blue ball, your red for uh, yourself for a red ball, and they're chasing each other. Right. Wow. As the vortex comes down, you have to have two points of energy that it's chasing. So it's like chasing each other in the center of the core. And then on the outside, it's pushing that energy out because of the way that it's pinched. OK, right. so you you bring up the natural part of the universe. And I got to tell you, in a dream, this is what I was shown. Give me just a sec. So it's like well, all right. I know it's crazy drawing. I'm trying to do it quick and I, I can't do it justice. But in, in what I see, this being the North Pole, this being the South, our universe is a toroid. This would be our sun. Bad color, I know. But as it goes around our equatorial plane of our universe, it's going up into the upper part of the plane. And then after so many thousands of years, it's going below the equatorial plane. And it does hmm. that consistently as time flows. And by doing so, it creates a polarization, this being the north, this being the south. So if you had a way of opening, of mimicking the natural flow of the energy of the universe, you could essentially open a portal if you had the right number and end up anywhere you want it to be just a theory that makes sense that Don't makes sense because uh in my opinion the universe is just uh nothing but fractals you know it's fractals of itself and if you zoom well, in or out on a fractal it's relatively the same pattern and that's what we see in nature a lot i would agree i would say that the stars are uh uh fractal energy that's flowing that's what we see as we see them sparkle and move throughout space. Uh, I think they're definitely held in space. I believe that planets all have their, their positions, but I think their position due to the external magnetic fields of each other, each planet that's in sequence or close by, just like as if you were to hold two magnets close together, but they're in opposite poles, they push off each other. They're not going to slam together. They, they keep a certain distance. Well, if you had all that in a circle, you could actually keep certain magnets at, at a distance, right? So it's just a thought, just a theory, something oh. to, you know, think about. It makes sense. You know, like if, uh, if we see, you know, magnetism and particles and then, you know, like actual uh, uh, material that we can see and then we zoom out on that scale and a larger scale, it's not unreasonable to believe that a universe – would have a polarization as well. And I can be totally wrong. Like I said, I've been wrong before. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Hey, I'll admit it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's there's my also, there's, also, there's also There's also the consideration that uh, apparently it's become sort of an academic fact that the, the universe is 99.9% .9 plasma of different types of different temperatures and different everything and and it's like mass and matter are almost like a little accident that happened out of the plasma and plasma right. forms its own dust and it's uh, it's it's interesting because it goes on about um it's a book i read recently by robert temple and it's called it uh, a new science of heaven i think it's called 
It's yeah. really fascinating because it's work is based on academic research, not not just his kind of theory, but it's it's uh, it was all to do with the Kordaleski clouds being that there's there are two of them, but they're nine times the size of the Earth, and they're between yeah. us and the Moon, and they have every property that would actually allow them to be intelligent not in organic forms. So and they've been around billions of years longer than us. So maybe we're just an experiment of theirs. Hmm. I get wow. that. Uh, and I totally understand. I read maybe two academic papers a day, depending on the subject. But I only have half faith in academia. When they canceled the ether and started calling mm -hmm. it the quantum vacuum, uh, I kind of lost faith in the fact that when they predict new things, there's half of the equation missing already. So how could they be dead on? How could they be absolutely accurate when they negate half of all energy equations? And, and hey, don't get me wrong. I give them kudos. There's a lot of people that put a lot of livestock into their research. But uh, I think they unfortunately took a misstep somewhere along the way. Need to pull it back and have a good look at it. <laughs> Oh, book. totally. I, I, I totally agree. It was just that Temple's yeah. book was actually, he was pulling data from people like Bostick and, you know, the people oh, yeah. who really did the foundational work. Yeah. Plenty, and also by bio, biophotonics as well. All well, those well, things that have been well. really suppressed over the years. But he, mm. he did incredible research into it and actually brought all these other papers forward and basically as a record for the information that should be freely available but he's had to search hard for it so it's really was, it's fascinating what was the name of the the author it's called a new uh, uh robert temple yep and uh it's uh, a new a new science of heaven is the name of the book perfect it was actually, I'll have to look into that maybe i'll order it i'm always looking to expand my awareness by far <laughs> yeah. so it, it i'll read the book and and you know what if uh I overstepped my opinion, then I'll apologize. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, you give me something. I know. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Yeah. No, I've, I'm totally with you. I understand exactly what you're saying. Cool. You know, there's, there's a, there's a lot missing out there, really. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think it's for lack of, of uh, wanting to research it. It's just unfortunate that in academia, they get push down certain paths because that's where the funding is. It's no longer about the search for truth by using science. And I mean science through experimentation because really that's what true science is. It's not writing a theory and calling it whatever you want to call it. Give me something that you built. Give me something to back that up. Show me something that you're doing that physically can, can show your effects that you're talking about. And unfortunately with the academic, community haven't seen that and with multiple different universities they have embellished on some of the research but there there is a lot of people out there that give their heart and soul into their work it's just i think they're looking in the wrong direction and i think if they were able to get funding for what we're working on we'd be leaps and bounds ahead of where we are today so Absolutely. I don't, I don't spit on all. I think there's a lot of geniuses out there. They're just unfortunately controlled geniuses. <laughs> and you also have a few uh, very yeah. stubborn people who refuse to just acknowledge new science like the ether at all. You know, uh, they're just too indoctrinated and they're uh, too far gone to be, you know, even dealt with. In my opinion. Well, well, it's kind of it's kind of hard if you've if you've based your entire career researching specific things in specific ways, and then somebody tells you uh, actually that's not the way it works. Right, it shocks there's the fundamentals of, of your a, whole. There's a there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of reluctance in there to change <laughs> your mind when you've spent yeah. your entire work life's work is based on, uh, you know, on something that may may not have been as correct as you thought it was. Right. So yeah, I understand right. that as well. So you get a lot of intransigent because people people don't want to think out of the box when it's upsetting their apple cart, you know. So yeah, exactly. I mean, which, is, which is which is just human. That's just human nature as well, you know. 
But the yeah, funding is the big, that's, that's the big thing. Nobody can do research into what they would really love to do because they find an anomaly. They go, oh, I should look down there. I mean, that's what science is supposed to do. But mm -hmm. if they can't get funding for that project, then they have to look elsewhere and they they, they need their tenureships. They need to keep feeding their families like everybody else. Yeah. So, so they're, they're, they're kind of stuck in a hard place, really. So yeah, I, not, I not abilities. I it's, it's just through lack Sorry. of opportunity, really. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't pave the way for out of the box thinking the system, you know, it's it's kind of stomps it out in, in every every aspect. Yeah, you'll see. Well, me we, we, we do. We do it. So I'm sure yeah. they do it as well, right. but they just don't have the opportunity to really do anything about it. In, or they don't their, want to put their, their funding. Seven. Right. No, yeah, exactly. Like yeah, there's not going to be any serious yeah. development from it. Like you'll see me harp on academia, but I won't harp on individuals doing work in academia because they're doing what they believe is right you know what i mean i may not agree with it but i harp on the the system because the system is broken the people that's in it exactly right just don't think they're right right you know so that's exactly yeah. right. when you hear me harp on academia it's on the system it's not on the people <laughs> just, yeah. just oh, oh yeah no this this is your the, the this is sitting on the magnets right and uh, mm -hmm. levitates it up as you connect each circuit all right, Joe. It's all you, buddy. I play. So what is what it's what what is this a similar weave to what you were using in your main coil, or is this a, a different? It's just a this different is manipulation a different of the weave. fields. It's a different weave, and it's a lot less. Uh let's mm. see. This one's twelve feet on either side by filament, so it's twenty-four feet in total. That's it, and it's made with. Uh, 30 gauge i think or 32 i can't remember it's almost almost as thin as a human hair right it's very hard to wind when you pull on it it breaks so it's it was very difficult but the basic principle is still the same and the winding sequence was slightly different than you see in that big coil So what exactly is going on here? <laughs> um, I'm pulsing my primary. I can't remember how much. I think it was a thousand hertz on that one. What we have here is two modified dual thieves, both being using this 12 volt battery, which, as you can see, is fairly dead. We have a function generator pulsing at 1,000 hertz, 10% DD cycle square wave. Both channels are going to pulse at the exact same pulse rate. And the first channel is going into the primary and the second channel is going into the secondary. And what we're going to attempt is to see if we can raise this coil, not once, but twice. Now, when you send a signal against or at each other, usually it cancels out. So let's see. The primary is turning on in three, two, one. Now we're going to turn the secondary on in three, two, one. As you can see, the signal didn't cancel out. All right, everybody, you have a great day. That was so cool. That's amazing. So it jumped twice. Oh, you said the signal didn't yeah. cancel out, but the energy and everything, it did it. It's like two separate energies in there? Yeah, well, what it is, it comes from the same battery, but it's uh, two signals from the signal generator. Because the coil is wrapped 180 degrees out of phase, uh, I pulsed the primary with 1,000 hertz. Uh, I think it was 10% dB sec. I can't remember. And then uh, I did the exact same pulse frequency on the secondary right at each other. So normally in a system like a solenoid, if you were to pulse a signal at each other, it just cancels each other out and what do you get? Maybe a bit of a field or something. I'm, I'm not even sure. But mine doesn't cancel out. When I pulse uh, my primary and then I pulse my secondary at each other, it multiplies. And so what you were seeing is I pulse the primary. It created a field that had lift. Then I pulsed the secondary and it raised even more. So that's what was going on there. 
And is that is that just um, sending the opposite polar magnetism to the magnet face, and that's what's forcing it up? Is it repulsion? I would say it's repulsion. Uh, whether or not it's a magnetic current that's pushing it up is debatable because when I pulse those coils, I lose magnetism after 20 hertz, at least evident magnetism. That doesn't mean that there isn't a magnetic field there, but uh, a magnet isn't affected by it when it reaches above 20 hertz. It'll polarize and then it just sits there. It doesn't turn. It doesn't hum nothing. But if I turn the hertz down to like, say, 20 and below, I can make it uh, turn on its axis or I can make it turn uh, the other way. I can't remember the term I was using for. I was explaining this to Jeremiah Pop. And he had seen it on video as well. Uh, I just can't remember. It's like when you have North Pole and the South Pole, it's not supposed to be able to turn this way, right? Well, the coil does that. It'll also turn on its pole, but uh, it'll only turn on its pole 20 hertz and below. When it spins like this on its axis, I can get to maybe maybe 85 hertz tops and then it stops. And then it's just power output from there and a, and a high-pitched squeal. <laughs> or sound that comes out of the coil, right? So I'm not sure, <clears throat> excuse me, if it's a magnetic field pushing off or if it's a scalar field pushing off because the power is so minimal. It, it, it's just on, on the watt meter, sometimes it doesn't even show up. And I'm not sure if that's the same video or not. I'm not even using the 12 volt battery. I'm just using the signal generator. So if if I'm just using the signal generator, it shouldn't be lifting at all. There's not enough power to create a magnetic field at all, right? So there's obviously something else going on there. Uh, still working on what? I have some ideas. Though. <laughs> yeah. So So I don't know if that answered the question or not, but yeah. Any thoughts on this, Nathan, on, on how you think it's working? Sorry, give me one second. I was over there looking something up for you. Um, oh, I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. No, I, I, I think uh, what's going on is you've created the bubble, but now it has to build on top of it. So you've already set the fact that it's there. You know what I mean? And yep. because it's 180 out of phase, it's creating a secondary one, and it can't occupy the same space. You see what I'm yep. saying? Yeah. So if you were to turn it on the other way, it would still go one, and it would still go the other because you're able to build on top of each other. So if you put a third winding in there, did the same thing, I would expect it to jump three times. So if you understand what I mean, you're I do the feel already. Then boom, boom, each one. And and I know you're dead on on that one because I never told anybody that I pulsed it the opposite direction and it did the same thing. I kept that one to myself. Good no, call. it out now. <laughs> Got it out of you. Well, it, it wasn't a secret. It was. It shows that you know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? I just I left it out because it, it's really not important unless. This conversation was to occur, which is like one oh, of the buddy, but, that's yeah. one of the most important things right there. Yeah, that's it like, is. That's like new tech right there. That's you got to have it now. Yeah, it's, both ways it works. Both ways I can. It does make a difference. You're absolutely right, Nathan. Well, it tells you about pressure and relationship between the coil and the magnet, and, yeah. and what it's doing. So you think it's just one thing when you have that, right? But say if it was in a system where it's held tight. Now you're causing compression in it, right? And then yeah. you get a spring effect out of it. That's that's amazing. I'm already working on the third coils, two separate ones, so that I can do that test. Because oh, you know, another, no. another set of double coils above it. So you, I, I don't know if you have to put paper in between, but you can lift 
on the double and then see if that'll create a field above it and lift on the double again. Well, when I built that coil that you see lift above the magnet, I built an identical one. So there's two of them. So I, I can do that test. That's, that's that'd awesome. Be, that'd be truly interesting because it kind of tells you a lot more about what's going on too because the magnet's not under it this time, but the wire is a magnetic field. So will it continue to do it? I like the way you're thinking. I'm going to have to try that. Absolutely. And while I was watching your video earlier today, something in my head clicked. And I wrote down a sequence that I have to try. I think I may have what you're looking for. Because if this sequence works, then it's the exact same thing you're talking about the gravel fly. Identical. It well, was Hey, Gerald. Uh, did you ever mention what frequency you're repulsing your coil at when you got it to levitate that little uh, uh, neodymium disc? Um, thousand, thousand hertz. Thousand hertz. Oh, which one on the levitating video or the one with the disc that you just saw? The disc that was underneath the coil and then it kind of swooped inside the and just levitated on top. That was really cool. Oh, yeah. That's the one with the load, right? That I used the element on. I believe that was. I'd have to look at my notes, but I believe that one was 20,000 hertz. 20,000, okay. Yeah, 20K, that one. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, hey, Gerald. Yeah? One quick thing, last thing on that, that little coil, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see, because it's not a magnet, if it jumps off, okay? If it jumps up from that next angle. And if you change the coil direction, would it matter? So... We're looking at a coil wrapped this way, right? Oh, yeah. What What if it's wrapped, you know what I mean, like this? So it's what, like a wheel in a wheel. Yeah. Like a gyroscope. So would it get a longitudinal jump? You know what I mean? Would it, would it oh. shoot straight up? I, I don't know how to build that exactly, but I'm just. I do. It takes a while, though. The reason why I never built a coil like that, like I tried at one point. I'm sorry, Bogrish, your name is Ian? I apologize. Yeah. Ian? Okay. So Ian's kind of doing the same thing that, that I did at one point. You wind your coil, and then you reverse the winding. And what I was trying to build was like a hourglass figure and then a circle that goes around it. So it's like a sphere with an hourglass in the middle. It's very difficult because the form you have to build to wrap it, it's insane. <laughs> right. So the hourglass I, is the indent for the toroid. Yeah, well, on the inside. It's, uh, the right? negative image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I don't on, know on. if I can make that, but I'll try. <laughs> so, so hold on. If you do an hourglass, you would basically have to have, uh, as it goes up, the hooks would have to go out, and then the other one would have to loop into it. You know what I mean? Like you're sewing in order to bring Ooh. it around. That'd mm. be the only way to get the two to combine because one one wire for that whole thing would be insane. Yeah, I get what you're saying by that. That's kind of like uh, in one of my videos, you'll see I take a ferrite core. It's broken in half, and it's got 100 wraps on one side and 100 on the other, and I clamp it over a smaller toroid, and then one coil has a diode and a capacitor and the other one excuse me goes to an led like not just a small one like a whole bank of them and think, uh, sorry no i'm sorry i i didn't mean to interrupt oh it's all good and then that very clamp like i can pull energy out of that all day and it doesn't affect the watt meter whatsoever so but i've never tried pulsing the two like you're saying so that's that's interesting. You got and I was also got thinking, thinking uh, Mary, you got me thinking. <laughs> Nathan also got me thinking, do you think we can 3D print like a, a frame for like the hourglass shape for the, the coil? Like maybe like a sliding disc frame like we see with the, the PoE vortex coil? To build an hourglass coil or to build my coil like to easily wrap the coil in an hourglass shape instead of a torus shape like we see with yeah. the poe coil to, oh, to yeah, you want wrap it in an hourglass shape yeah like a frame to make it to make it evenly spaced 
It has to be a triple. Mind. It has to be a triple frame. You'd have to have a plate up above. You'd have to have a mm. plate down below, and then you'd have to have a plate in the middle with a hole that you could wind your copper through, and your number sequence wouldn't go in a circle. Say you go mm. one, three, five, seven. It would go one through the hole to three, through the hole to five through the hole to seven and it would be consistently like that so your pinch would be like a kind of like a hard twist but at the same time all the upper part would come out and it would form a geometrical form up above and it would form a geometrical uh, form below but your your huh. copper on the inside of that hole on your center plate would be like a, a compressed twist hmm. i built one half done prior and i i chucked it because i didn't have patience to finish it <laughs> well what was your method for building it did you have like a frame or did you uh, wind it around something what i did is i had uh three pieces of uh i think it was quarter inch plywood and then i had the form on the top but i had a big hole that was right around where i had the nails put in and then i had a, a middle plate with a smaller hole and then i had a bottom plate with the nails but it also had a big hole in it so i was oh and to hold it all together i was using um threaded bolts with nuts that held each plate in place so it, it was kind of like a scaffolding right mm. so it looked like this big three plated huge monstrosity it was very difficult to wind but it is possible I could build something similar to show you, but it might take me a couple days. <laughs> just just to yeah, build no, the form, right? So that you Yeah, understand. that sounds very complicated. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. It'd be easier for you to take uh, a quarter inch or a half inch copper tubing. You know how it spirals? So you pull it apart and then you would uh, take bolts and you would bolt bolts around it into a board and then you would fit that copper tubing around that and you would wind around the copper tubing it would be a lot easier in fact i bring that up because that's the one i've almost completed and that one's for i'm going to attempt to heat water while pulsing the torrid coil because it's the copper tubing is wrapped within the the geometrical coil itself Oh, hold on, hold on. Ian's got something like that. Give me a second. I'll pull oh. it up for you. See, I was wondering if you had more coils than just that oh, one. Oh, he does. Oh, I like this. Now you get me all happy. <laughs> I love seeing geometrical coils. They're the best. I'm down so hold on. You're talking no, about the inner coil. So let's pull that up. So there's the oh. inner. Nice. Oh, yeah, I was going to go. Going to cook my dinner on that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's Probably that's good. um that's a tune that's a that's a primary coil for the there's a pancake uh, by filer coil underneath it, and yeah. I was using that just to keep it all flat. Just so it's for the grabber flyer, basically trying to. I mean, I'm, I could be, you know, completely in the wrong direction, but I'm trying to use the ZVS impulsing into. It. Oh, question: Why? Let's see, where are they? Every time I remove the, uh, every time I remove the capacitors, these both sides of it short out. And it, it, is that because I'm blowing me. something? I'm not a ZVS guy yet. <laughs> I've right. never had it short out when I remove the capacitors. How are you removing them? Just, just soldering them out? Just, yeah, just soldering them out. And uh, unless, but I, they're they're nowhere near the components that. If I, I can't think why I'd be blowing the MOSFETs with the heat, but anyway, it's it had it's not just once; it's it's happened twice. <laughs> so I cut everything out around it to make sure that there wasn't any shorting or anything going on. And uh, and this was a new one I got yesterday, and I took them out and it shorted immediately. Totally bizarre. Did, anyway. did you did you run it without the new capacitor put in it? Nope. There's no sure. point because I know it's just going to it'll just go straight to ten amps out of the power supply and uh, and it'll do nothing. But oh. I do have 
I have another smaller one, which I've used it to tune the coil anyway. So until what, what's the capacitors that you're that. that you're adding to it? Oh, these. Well, that, um, that's um, a tuning tuning board I made. So it's a six six kilovolt. So it, it um, between that and. Yeah, just using a small ZVS board, and then that feeds into the capacitors, and then the capacitors go to the primary, uh, to the tuning points on the primary. So, and basically, the ones with switches, when you go over like a thousand or two thousand volts, you start getting zapped with the switches. So these are just like hard points that I just basically put in the, the you know, put in a wire joiners in between oh, yeah. and just screw them down basically. So, but it works. It works fine. It was. So I mean that that coil. I mean it was tuned at uh, I think it was seventy one seventy one point six nanofarads. Basically, it was. So is that coming thing. out of the ZVS mm. right there? That that those users are before the ZVS, right? No, those the, that's the, that's to replace the capacitors that were on the ZVS. I got rid of those on on that one oh, just okay, as a okay. stopgap, and then and then though, that's a tuning capacitor bank, so I can get to the exact best tuning for the coil pair that's probably what's doing it because we're just using two capacitors right at 0 0.150 uh nanofarad so together in series we're getting 0 0.075 nanofarads in the capacitance but it's not variable so it's a direct shot so it doesn't have any feedback my thought is with that variable you may have feedback and as soon as you get feedback on the ZVS where it's not protected, it blows it. Yeah. Right. But it's not, it's, it's, I've, I never, I never actually was able to do anything with this. I haven't even tried it. I just know that those posts, the posts are shorting out, so it's not going to work. And that's just from removing the capacitors that were on it. I haven't even connected it to the coils or anything. So the, the capacitor, the tuning, the tuning bank is basically, um, uh, I mean, they're they're polypropylene, so they should they're fast switching and all the rest of it. And then the more capacitors you have to do the same thing, it it um, the ESR goes down as well, so you get a, a better flow through it as well. So did you sure. short? But only the ones, only the ones that are actually connected are actually active in it. Did you short the capacitors mm -hmm. before you unsoldered them? Because I wonder if they tested it at the factory, and they it had a charge. So when you went to unsolder it, it shorted them out. Oh, quite possibly. But have you have you ever had to do that, Nathan? With your I, I didn't have any problems with mine. I put a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, in between the capacitor and the board, and I hit the solder on the back and pop each side one at a time. I never put it on a flat plate or anything like that, a hot plate. I can yep. have Sean mm -hmm. get with you. This right here, Sean, absolute expert <laughs> on this. Walk me through everything. Trust me. So he'll, uh, he'll yeah. explain it. Yeah, because that way we can stop blowing these things up and get you on to the next level. So I'll put you in direct contact with Sean. and I'm sure he'll Oh, yeah, that would be great. For sure. Yeah. He's got yeah. some awesome yeah, nice. acid awesome coil stuff. Sorry, go ahead, Diane. Yeah. No, I was just going to show. I've, I literally just wind these just to go above and below. I don't know. If, I mean, in the Grava flyer, I mean, it, it, again, I'm just trying to work with the same principles that are already out there. But um, I was trying to using Evo circuits where I can actually uh, impulse these coils. And I went down a, a very long conversation with ChatGPT about the coil winding directions the field directions and to, just to get everything congruent going through from top to bottom and uh, and even the, the the orientation of the magnet bowls i was using it's like mm -hmm. uh, those primer bowls i made a few of those north yep. and south oh and, yeah uh, but basically those there was with the ribbon coils i used there was too much interaction between the coils they, they were feeding into each other all over the place but that's because i was using um a different i was using a different uh, pulsing i wasn't using a zvs 
but that's why I wanted to make this center coil here, which is a, a pancake. Because basically, I had to use neodymium magnets to hold it together, the former together, to, to stop it from doing too many multiple winds on each uh, each surface. But uh, I'd actually, interestingly enough, I don't know, Sean might be able to answer this. The, when I had the neo magnets on it, holding it the former together, um, the resonant, I was waiting for the, uh, the epoxy to dry and I thought I'd do some measurements on it. The coil came out at, I think it was 290 kilohertz as its resonant frequency. And when I took the magnets off, it dropped to 190. So that was kind of weird. So I guess the, the magnetic fields were interacting with it in such a way that it was, um, you'd think it would have sent it the other direction, but it, uh, yeah, it reduced it by a third. And that was kind of weird. Slowed the field but, down uh, perhaps. Yeah. Well, it was, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it slowed down. It made it, it made it as if it was a bigger coil, basically. It was uh, slowing down the, the resonant frequency. That makes sense. It's, uh, yeah but um but yeah no i've tried a few things i mean this this one i made just because it was a, it was a it looked like it should be something of great beauty <laughs> the <P -O> <laughs> but, it, it is, but it's it has a it has a nested coil inside it which is i mean this it's a rodent coil but it's the first and third order i made a smaller one of um i've got a Oh, can you show that at an angle? Because we can't see the coil on the center of it. Oh, there you go. Oh, well, oh, you yeah. can see you see this one. You see now the one that's yeah. there. there yeah, is. so it's kind. Of, it's yeah. It's a big road. Did you get that yeah. um, frame design from Alchemical Science? No, I did it before him, and uh, it was oh. um, there was a guy. There was a guy on on. Um, oh, what's that? What's that website that has all the? Anyway, it was it was. Uh, uh tom well it was 11 years ago i think but uh, i i find it about in 2019 i think i built this and that was the first coil i made so um maybe tom this barnett. one i made but, uh, as a tom barnett that's it yeah it was tom yeah. barnett his 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 entire kind of take on the whole mod 9 and, and the whole sequencing was um, oh, that's a beautiful a, coil. somebody 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 actually just somebody designed all the formers that, that you could make to make that coil and that's that was i think why i bought the first 3d the 3d printer was because of mm. that so but how that, difficult was that to wind that nested coil did you have to wind the the outer coil first and this then one the or vice versa no yeah. the bigger one yeah you've got it uh the bigger one well it, they're both the same principle so uh i put some other coils of just heavy uh eight number eight gauge inside mm. both of them orthogonally to them just to see if um i don't even know why i did that at the time it just seemed like a good idea but now i'd be able to impulse those as primaries and see how they would behave with the have uh, you noticed any other, over unity effects there. well hello no, I, uh, hey <laughs> loving your coil on, bernie how you doing loving all the coils yeah. yeah the coils are beautiful yeah, but, i love them well i um this one, this one has the most amplification just from its own uh, resonance. You know, when I put them in, when I put them in series from the outer to the inner, um, it's, um, I mean, it's still at top. It's like five megahertz or something like that. But it's um, or less. I can't remember. I wrote it down, but um, but it goes from a twelve volt input. It'll, it'll be up at three hundred volts at its resonant frequency as well. So while yeah. maintaining the amperage, it's nice, nice. Well, it's, it was just it's just purely the signal generator going into it. So it's it's resonating at its self resonant right. point, but it raises. I mean, it just jumps. I mean, it goes way up on it. So it's, yeah, no, it's, that's yeah, interesting because I noticed the same yeah. uh, the same kind of effect in my vortex coil. I've got a PoE vortex coil with the interference pattern similar to that one, only right. with the interference pattern, and uh, we got. Um, we got it to double the voltage while maintaining the current on on the output side which is, you know, right. pretty extraordinary, but um, it's not, you know, that extraordinary when you look into the research of these coils, that's what they're supposed to do, you know? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd, 
you know, I've I've only done voltage impulsing, and I'd like to get into doing proper current impulses, and then to see because that's um, I mean, with Evo's last video on this, I mean, uh, he's helped me immeasurably in, in everything with the circuits and everything. I'll take my hat off to the guy; he's brilliant. And um, mm. so he's, you know, um, we're talking about what Tesla's radiant energy really is. It's it's basically that's a current. It's based on rapid discharge of capacitors, basically. Impulse, he also yeah. said that the CVS cannot produce current impulses, and he's usually right. But I don't understand that at the minute. I'm not quite sure. So, are you familiar with the work of First Stop Energies at all? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I had a good look at it before, and I made these instead of the POEs, okay. simply because they had obviously been around for a while. And there was one well, video that I'm I've never been is... able to find again. Oh. There's one video they yeah. did that I've not, not been able to find, and that was they their All of on, their videos uh, have been taken down. They're, like, impossible yeah, to get a hold of. Yeah. But there was a great one, and it was all to do with it was inputting that tonal frequency into it. And and it was quadrupling in in uh, in intensity, mm. you, depending on which. And I do have in the notebook. I actually took notes on it because I, I was interested because it was it was in it was to do with acoustics basically rather than anything else. And it was it was very responsive to that as well. But I, I've got them somewhere. I haven't been able to find them recently though. But yeah. The reason why I bring it up though is uh, I wanted to ask you if you're using uh, or if you've uh, ever used or intended to use the Nunes method, the open circuit method that they employ in some of their their designs. Are you familiar with the the open circuit method that they use? No, no, I didn't. Yeah. I, I'll I, show I, you I kind of I looked at it. Okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, once once I saw Gerald's coil, I thought. That's the way to go. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. I want to teach everybody, so I'm glad you're interested. That's awesome. Oh, you're definitely, totally, yeah. no, you're definitely going to have to be in on that class that we teach. So what's oh, been I'll there. be there for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so 18 kilohertz. Okay, mm -hmm. and then... And what sort of results did they get with this? So they claim that with this open circuit method, it maximizes the resonance within these vortex coils, and they're able to 10 times the voltage output while maintaining or slightly increasing the current. Um, I've actually seen yeah. a spike of energy at some of these higher frequencies. I can't actually use the, the higher frequency ranges with the setup I have. I'm kind of limited, but... Um, because I'm using a stereo amp receiver, gen uh, basically to input the power and the uh, the tone. Um, right. But yeah, no, it's it's an interesting method, and not a lot of people are aware of it. So uh, I tried to um, reverse engineer what they were doing because a lot of stuff got taken down, and I put a, a guide up, a do-it-yourself guide, if you're interested in the open circuit method and learning more about it. Right. No, for sure. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Yeah, because I remember um, uh, Marco Roden. As colorful a character as he is, uh, he did that. Uh, he had what was that? What was that guy's name? Uh, guy always wears the hat. Anyway, he 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 basically did a reverse engineering pro project for uh, Marco based on a video oh, that they had, a live presentation of the, what was that? Randy Powell. You know the one? He was the one who. Yeah, he was yeah, the one who Randy originally Powell. transcribed VBM on and put it uh, mapped it onto the Torrid for practical uses. And uh, his work is actually what we're seeing a lot of in these these coils, or remnants of his work. Right. Yeah, Randy Powell uh, right. followed uh, Marco Rogan for quite a while after Marco Rogan kind of yeah. fell away from. All right. Line. No, but this this was this was a, this was a different video, and it was a presentation, like a live presentation. But this guy, he was in Germany or something, who had who had hmm. wired the coil in a specific way and using a bass amplifier, and uh, but he had but uh, I. I didn't really know enough about it to understand it properly at the time, but it was using um, a, a bunch of high voltage capacitors and he was creating what seemed to be more, I, a lot more coming out than was going in to the point mm. where Marco Roden actually asked, um, it's the guy who makes the, the, the model airplanes and stuff now. He has his kid called Charlie. I, I wish I could remember his name. Anyway, 
but he he did a lot of work in reverse engineering that, but he could not find the way that it worked. And the thing, so and that all kind of went away. But it was a similar, but it was more on this design of coil, the, you know, the, the the continuous spiral, rather than the cross weave that the uh, the, the POE coils are. But it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely, you know. So uh, yeah, I what keep, I've I keep, seen. I, I keep getting distracted down rabbit holes, <laughs> and then I don't quite finish this one, and then I'll move on to this, or I don't experiment enough with this one, and then I think, ooh, that looks really interesting. I think I'll go there. But uh, but that's what I've done with your coil, Gerald. It's like I'm really fascinated by it because it's it's great. I mean, the fact that you've got that geometry and the rhythm all built into the coil is just awesome. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. It so uses first up energy was uh actually using the coil that you use without the interference pattern the design without the interference pattern to um drive rotaries more efficiently and they were doing testing with that versus the interference pattern they found that was the more efficient one to generate the magnetic field to to um drive the magnetic rotary and they had i have uh, videos mm -hmm. on my channel um of uh clips that i found on you can actually go on their instagram the instagram is the one thing that they have left uh a lot of video clips of uh their experiments and stuff is it's still up there um where they're driving a bunch of different rotaries with different um sizes of these coils and it's really impressive all right do you mean i have to join instagram <laughs> oh no 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 i honestly i I, I uh, feel you on that, but uh, no, you you don't have to join just to look at their their videos. You can just go to oh, okay, First Stop okay, Energies good. Instagram, yeah, and you can see a lot. Oh, of, right. Okay, uh, so it's just, they're still around then. Well, that's good. Okay, yeah, no, I'll do for sure. One Stop yeah. Energies, that's the Nunez couple, correct? The Nunez, yeah. yes. The the yeah. couple, we don't know what happened to them. They they stopped communications late in 2022, early 2023. So uh, they kind of dropped off of the, the all their social media platforms went went silent. So, but in terms of the information that that's still left, um, their YouTube videos got pulled down. They had hundreds, but uh, um, yep. you can go to Instagram and find some of the remnants of that. And I did actually in the do it yourself guide, I did manage to pull some of the um, uh, screenshots of uh, their website, which they had a, a forum link to in their website that the link was disconnected, but I found a connection to it while doing a Google search. You know, sometimes it brings up different pages from the website. And uh, so I don't know how I found it, but I found it and it had like a whole bunch of descriptions of all the videos that were taken down up YouTube. So uh, I managed to grab all that and I have that documented as well. Nice. Maybe. Yeah, I, I heard whispers of uh, they got uh, snatched up by a private company, but again, just whispers you know take it with a big truck of salt so who knows like you said they just sort of i have no doubt that somebody you know wanted to use use them for some kind of uh you know project or another so 